Okay. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Vlad Bedin-Tras, and I'm going to talk about basic application optimization techniques. Uh, so I won't be talking much about infrastructure or front-end side, because that's there are other people covering these areas much better than I can. I will be focusing on the inside application, inside internals of the uh, application architecture, MySQL, and things like that. Uh, in the first session I had, I didn't talk about myself, but I said, okay, others do, so I will do too. <laughs> but it's also related to the topic uh, because it's a little bit about my performance. <laughs> so, uh, I, I have a small uh, digital and classical marketing communication company. Uh, we do, but we mostly do digital communication. Uh, nowadays, before we used to do more, more print and things like that, but uh, as things develop, everything is moving towards digital, so all we are too. Uh, basically, I try to do different stuff differently. <laughs> Uh, I, at one point, I organized 48-hour non-stop music festival. Some of you might know this band. Uh, it was quite a big uh, at that time. Uh, it was like 10 years ago. Uh, I published a poetry book, and I ran a three consecutive political marketing campaigns for a local politician uh, that that did not feature his face on the. <laughs> on the posters <laughs> so i try to be unique uh, that's the form the music festival and that's me i can go high this is 3,560 uh, meters a place called called places camp <laughs> uh, and that's me running the marathon so i can go a long distance too <laughs> and that's me getting a bachelor's in the marketing communication lab uh, September <laughs> uh, and it's a funny story about persistence too because I started the study 23 years before this point <laughs> of course I didn't study so long I stopped and then uh, finished last year uh, this is one of the posters we did for the campaign of political marketing as you see it didn't show a, a face of a politician which is quite a different uh, approach uh, we just we have just shown things he has done, so and we won by a big. Uh, and why I'm talking about this because it basically boils down to this website we did for a plant. We are, we are still improving it, and uh, uh, this is why I came into optimizing for application because the first version of this site. When we, not first version that was published, but the first one that we got working, uh, it took like 60 seconds to render the, the uh, results because it's a, a search engine that uses multiple remote web services to get its data. Uh, some, or perhaps some of you know it based on the traffic XML. Uh, it's, it's the basic one, and that is connects like three, four other services uh, of, of, to, to join the results and also to get pictures, descriptions, and things like that. You get the, only a, an ID of, of the hotel from the main data stream and then you need to query another one. So uh, basically uh, now it perfects, uh, performs much better uh, and I will talk about details a bit later. Uh, so, Common bottlenecks in applications. First of all, is poorly designed uh, database and slow queries. It can make a, a really large difference. I did a little bit profiling of Joomla, and about 65% of the time is spent in queries in uh, Joomla execution. Uh, 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 second thing is that there can be a bottleneck is our expensive CPU operations. Imagine even image resizing or some calculation for some, I don't know, uh, 
price calculation that base that can go uh, become very complicated because it can <laughs> also involve some, for instance, uh, some remote web service and things like that. A third thing is an um, expanded network operation. This is web services or network disks. You don't want to use that when you're <laughs> doing the website. File system operation, uh, even now that we have SSD disks, file system operation are, sti are still expensive. Uh, of course, not one, but when you have like 100,000 hits uh, uh, you need to do, it's gonna take a long time. And of course, everything of the above inside the loop. So when you do multiple iterations of the same thing, it can go, go, and go, and never finish. Uh, there's one thing about architecture that is not really thought about. It's the abstraction and flexibility for the end user are basically an an enemies of the performance. Because you think about user interface, software interfaces, dependency, Jackson, service layer, etc. And the reason, and this is one of the reasons that each major general release gets a, bit, a little bit slower. Uh, of course, the end result is not the same. Uh, uh, luckily, at the same time, PHP progresses, servers progress, so the websites are still getting faster. But the, if you would take Joomla 1 or Mambo and put it on today's uh, infrastructure, it will run much faster than today's uh, versions, just because. And the reason why is this is the call graph from Joomla. And this is the, uh, what is included are only calls uh, that are above one percent. Uh, so uh, it's going. It starts at the top and it goes down from 199, etc. I can show later the details. Uh, and at the bottom you have the the smallest. Uh, but it, uh, th this is the, uh, based on the expense of the, the uh, itself of the function itself or, or the number of iterations <laughs> because some of this can go like 5,000 times so a small, ti a small time frame but a lot of repetitions can also bring a lot of, uh, of uh, time to the end uh, result. Uh, that's execu basically execution trees. Uh, and my, one of the major uh, reason is that for each class uh, we have a separate file and we need to fi load a huge amount of files uh, to make all the classes work together. Uh, also, user interface data has to be stored somewhere and when you do the execution, it has to be retrieved, it has to be uh, transformed uh, and this is something that slows uh, uh, operations down. Uh, for, so, when you don't need a user in a real, when your users not, is not going to be end user, then it's the user interface, the real one. Uh, I suggest you would rather use something like hard coded uh, config file because it will perform much better than with all the queries. Like, uh, I mean, if you have 100 settings, you could have 100 queries. Uh, if it's not conf done properly. Uh, okay, of course, one query could be faster, uh, or also fast. Uh, it's basically trade-off between flexibility and performance. You need to find your hotspot. It depends on what you are doing, so there is no general advice on this. Uh, I spoke about this before. Uh, uh, second thing, uh, do design your APIs to allow processing multiple items in a single call because think about Joomla custom fields and tags. Uh, let me show you something. Okay, this is what happens when you activate custom fields. And you have like 100 items on one page, which is 
can happen with, I don't know, uh, picture uh, image galleries or a long list of things. Uh, and you get 183 queries. So normally, the, without it, there are about 22, at the, if I remember correctly. So basically, for each item, a new, uh, a new query is performed. Uh, as long as you, as you have one visitor on the page, it's not a problem. But if you have like 1,000 concurrent users or 5,000, it can happen. Uh, there are sites in Joomla, for instance, so Fortis in Germany. I know he has a website that runs uh, something like million users uh, per day. Uh, so, so that would really slow down performance and kill the MySQL mm -hmm. servers, uh, or you would need a really huge infrastructure to support it. Uh. Ah. Okay, so. mm, what? Do another do is do use parallel processing. Yes, it can be done also in PHP. I personally never used pthreads, uh, but it's supposed to work. Uh, but I do use uh, parallel soap uh, on one of, uh, on the website I showed you before. Basically, this list is generated in a way that each result of on this page is queried separately because the API of the web service we are querying only supports a single call. So we need to do a separate call for each one and it takes about two seconds for that slow web service to respond. So we do the parallel requests and it works well. Uh, so in case you have a user case for that, I recommend this library. It works perfectly. And another thing you can do, do, do delegate some work to the client. Pass it JSON or XML or another form of data and do the rendering on the front end uh, uh, side because it will use client CPU to render it. You don't need to use server CPU to render the whole HTML and path. Pass it also, it will make the responses faster. You know, basically, Ajax. Uh, this is something we do also on this website uh, for the sorting of results. I can try to show it, but I don't know how well it will work because of the internet connection here. Yeah. Yeah. It will take too long because of the internet connections. <laughs> you see, it's almost instant because it preloads all of the results in, uh, in, the, in the back, in the form, of, and it just adds some more data when you request. Uh, for instance, pictures and things like that are lazy loads. So, the, uh, but the basic result uh, is loaded at the first uh, run, and it goes quite. It works quite. It's, this this has this has like <coughs> hundred and fifty five results, and uh, if you would do it on the server side, it would take much longer to to handle each request would have to be rendered separately. Uh, back. <sighs> A little bit about code optimization. Uh, first thing is, the, uh, the first tool you can use is Joomla debug output. It gives you a basic information what, or about what's going on, uh, how long your uh, application takes 
to to render. Uh, but there are also a much more uh, exact and more advanced tools. First one is xdebug profile you make, and then you read it with k cache grind or q cache grind if you use Windows. Uh, it does the same thing. It's basically a port to Windows. There are also newer tools like Z-Ray from, uh, from Zend and Blackfire. Uh, and also PHP Storm has a little bit of profiling built in. Uh, that is KKL Green, as you see uh, on the wall, you can Kali map, uh, a Kali map, and uh, at the bottom there is a cool graph. Uh, the, uh, I saw the, the whole picture uh, before. Uh, it basically, shell starts from the top from mm -hmm. its percent execution time and then uh, breaks down things on s in smaller uh, what by the percentage of execution time. Uh, and this is. Uh, the, I, I just found it recently. This is built in the uh, PHP Storm that a lot of you use. You can also read it with the PHP Storm, but it does not show the graphical way, just the list of functions and the percents uh, that are found in the uh, profile. Uh, if any, I don't know if any of you has worked with these tools. Uh, already, should I talk about a little bit about them or not? Uh, this is this cool graph. This is C. And here on, on the left, it's an overview. So you see where you are. And uh, the below each box, you see the percent of the, the uh, percent of the execution time that this function um, uh, does use. Uh, on the left, you have a list where you can see exact numbers. For instance, inclusive. This is inclusive sub -co sub uh, calls, is sub functions, and self means the data in self uh, is the percent of the function needs to function by itself without a sub uh, for How do I, I see that you have XAMPP install, temp, cache, grind out. When I use my Joomla on, on, a, on a normal web server, how do I get that? Uh, the profile? Yeah. You, just, you just need to, if you, you, you need to have xdebug installed. Okay. And then you have to activate profiler. Uh, this is this setting. Okay. You just activate it, but because normally you don't don't want that on the live server because it takes a really long time. I mean, not really, but it adds like thirty percent to the execution time or so. Also, X debug is not recommended for the same reason for the live sites. So normally you should do it in a copy, develop my copy or so, uh, not in a real, a real live site. Unless you need to profile real users, uh, then you somehow have that perhaps you would need to think about the other tools available. Uh, because I think they have a better solution for profiling life sites than the XDebug, which is basically development uh, tool uh, not meant to be used on a like website. Uh. Another topic that can uh, drive their performance in a big way is database and query optimization. Uh, okay, there are techniques to optimize database itself uh, for settings and serv that server side, but I'm not going to talk about that. That's infrastructure. Uh, 
I'm going to talk just about queries and the most useful thing you can do is indexes. Um, <laughs> uh, some advice to construct query construction. Reduce the amount of data uh, that you select in a query. Don't do select star because it selects all the columns you have in a database. And normally that is not supported by the indexes. So it will do a slow query. Unless you have a covering index that covers all the, covers all the, the, the uh, columns. Uh, second thing, sorry for the profanity, but <laughs> don't store JSON in a relationship database like Joomla does for, for uh, access uh, because it performs much worse than uh, when you have a relationship da uh, database. It's basis to have da data separate so you can query, for instance, in Joomla, Currently in access table, you have JSON string and you cannot query or it's very hard to do so for, I don't know, just give me perform, uh, edit or edit own uh, results. You need to un read all the assets, unpack them, merge the results together and then all, only then you get the answer whether something is allowed or not. Uh, in the previous session, I spoke about uh, re refactoring this thing to a relationship uh, relational database, uh, in which and you can, if you somebody is interested, like, you can talk to me later, and I can show you uh, how it performs. <laughs> uh, third thing you could do: split complex queries into multiple posts because complex queries with one of 10 lines, 15 lines are very hard to optimize. Uh, there's an example of this in Joomla. And this is the con content query. Let's find it. Ah, this is the one. As you see, it takes a really long time to execute. It's a list of 100 items out of 100,000 records. Uh, and it takes eight nearly 9,000 uh, milliseconds to execute this query because it's a really complex one. And if you click on ex explain column, you see that it's using file sort and one, jo one of the joints cannot use the index. Uh, so file sort is a really slow thing. So if you if you, uh, this is one of the useful parts in the Joomla debug. You can look at this explain uh, tab, and here it, see, it says you can see if it uses any of the keys. So when the, use, if the key is not seen, this is Joomla 4. Uh, uh, it has a little bit a different output than default, which we can find in uh, Joomla 3. Uh, but it's nicer to color. So when they report and here you can see it's this 
really bad because it loads for, uh, uses disk to sort the the, <laughs> the records on the disk, and this is the slowest thing, basically. Uh, a little bit about indexes. Indexes can have dramatic improvements, like thousand times faster. Uh, and uh, here I have an example. I just did just yesterday when while working on that my my library for the authorization. This is what happened when I had a wrong index on the first column. The, the, the query took 1,000 milliseconds. I, I, I made a, a covering index and I put it on the, the primary uh, uh, key and does not this does not work well well in you know DB because primary key is basically needs to be uh, for performance reasons it needs to be uh, an auto increment uh, 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 integer. After I moved uh, that key to set, uh, I made the same key uh, but a second as a secondary key, and I added one key just on the on the ID column. Uh, I got uh, 0 0.8687 milliseconds on the same query. This so indexes can have really dramatic. Improve, it can mean a really dramatic improvement if done properly. Uh, what I'm talking about here are technically B3 indexes. Uh, there are other, uh, I think it's K3 or C3. This is about geospatial data, but it's not supported in InnoDB. Uh, there are also uh, full text indexes. They work in a similar to search engines search for, but they help only for the match operations. Uh, basically what you need to know, uh, of course some of you, there, there is Nikola that knows much more than I uh, <laughs> about this, <laughs> so I will be just brief. Uh, 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 what you need to know that in index, when you make an index you, uh, on a multiple columns, uh, in MySQL, we just look at the first column. So, first column is, uh, you need to make, put columns that you have in a where, or basically you need to put columns when you, that you have in a where, uh, or in a join columns. So, the columns that you are joining tables on, uh, you need to be indexes if you want, indexes if you want to make things, things faster. And the more in, in MySQL looks at the leftmost column. So you have, for instance, if you have like name and surname, and you search for where name is like John, uh, you have to have the index on the name column. But if you're requesting also data for the surname, which basically normally you do, you have like on the first column the name and the second column the surname. And if you search by the name, it will perform, it will use the index. If you would look, do something like when surname is, I don't know, John, Doe, do, uh, uh, it would not use this index because it, it looks only at the first, first column and the rest are there just to, res to return results faster. Uh, And if you put all the columns into that you are searching for, I mean, with, that you are selecting in the select uh, in the index, you can have a really big index. But this big index will, will in, your return results instantly because it's called something like covering index, where you have the, all the re, uh, the data already in the index. Uh, not only the conditional where or join on uh, columns, which are the basic, but all the in the index. But of course, you need to have the the, the part from where or join on on the left, the, the most left column. Uh, indexes uh, are u not used uh, when optimizer uh, determines that the basically. Uh, Result set will be too big. 
uh, what this means practically is that when you have like 100 items and you request something with you put 90 IDs in the query, it won't use the index because it, it makes no sense to it. Basic rule of thumb is that uh, the query, uh, the result set needs to be smaller than 80% uh, projected. It, it uses some projected techniques to, to estimate that uh, about 80 to 85% uh, of the whole result set it needs to be below that. Uh, in the, the uh, <coughs> this is when I was working on the, the new authorization library. Uh, I had such an example because I inserted too 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 small number of records and I, I couldn't get it to use the index. And I was so what the why the, it doesn't use the index because I had I was requesting hundred out items of out of hundred. So basically, it makes no sense to make an index of such a database uh, because indexes are really similar to what you have in a book. If you have index on name, it will sort name by the letters, and it, 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 it's like a tree internally in MySQL, uh, at least in InnoDB. Uh, and it l it knows where letter A starts, where uh, of course okay so, uh, letter A is at the beginning, but it knows where letter F starts, and it goes directly to that page, so it can uh, access data much faster than it, when it would, it would have to go to all the records and find all Fs, uh, because data in the in the uh, index are sorted by the order. Of column, uh, how it, w where, um, it how it was defined when the or ta table column was or table was created. Uh, that that order is used. Uh, one thing you probably don't know, I didn't before, like one or two days ago, <laughs> when I read some book on this topic, that in you know DB you don't need to include primary key in indexes. Because in either DB uh, indexes uh, that are not primary are basically just uh, a shortcut to the primary key. So uh, in DB already includes ID uh, or, or primary key in, into the index. So you don't need to do like name ID, like two columns. Uh, you just need to do name and it will include ID already. Uh, uh, and one advice, you might need to create indexes with the same columns, but in different order because uh, of the rule of the leftmost. So uh, if you have queries on the same database that request data in the different order, you will also need to make a different uh, indexes on the same columns. Uh, this can happen also when you leave uh, the optimization entirely to MySQL when you do joins. Jo when joins are uh, performed, normally uh, MySQL, if you don't put some uh, special uh, rec uh, special instructions in the query, uh, it, it will estimate, it will do their, uh, its estimates and it can reorder joins internally. You will see that in the explain uh, statement and that means that you won't be joining A to B tables, but you will be joining B to A. Uh, and you also need the reverse, uh, reverse the uh, column order in the index. And of course, this also depends on number of records uh, inserted. So it won't be the same, it won't be always the same. So you need to think about it in upfront to make indexes in different variations. One downside, on the other hand, one downside of indexes or too many indexes is that insert operation gets lower because it, uh, each time the data is inserted, these indexes need to be updated. So more indexes you have, the slower it will become the insert part. But this is not so much for the problem for the normal CMS because normally on the CMS you have small number of inserts and a large number of reads. So Yeah.
that's about MySQL and, uh, or not MySQL, no. SQL in general. Uh, and the last topic is about caching and preloading. Caching basically means that you store already retrieved data for some expensive operation that I listed at the beginning and store it locally for reuse. Uh, uh, this can be combined with preloading. Preloading means that you load some set of items that you expect that you will need uh, in upfront before they are requested. For instance, on application initialization. Uh, all the caching thinking or knowledge boils down to selecting great or the right caching unit and the right caching times so that user won't notice that you're doing the caching so the things will update on the right time. Uh, <laughs> so my advice on this topic and perhaps somebody, some of you don't know, I wrote the caching for the Joomla. And, I mean the basic that has been up updated, changed uh, since then, but I wrote it for the point 1.6, so I kind of know a little bit of this topic. Uh, it's break execution cycle in smaller pieces. Don't do, for instance, uh, Joomla includes page, page, page cache plugin, system plugin that you activate, but this uh, caches the whole page together. Uh, make Break execution cycle in smaller pieces in method calls, uh, etc. Uh, whatever makes sense for your application, and uh, then use that stored data to render page, uh, because the rendering itself it won't is not so slow. What is slow is more 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 or less bound to data retrieving uh, or calculation on the data. Once you have that, the, uh, the rendering itself goes quite fast. Uh, best caching candidates are often reused data and processes and very expensive operations. Cache, cache remote resources whenever possible because that is the most, the slowest thing. Uh, there is no such thing as fast web service. But if you compare it to, I don't know, local database, uh, it will go like, 100 times slower and web service because of the network latency uh, time uh, or latency on the server sites uh, and so on. Uh, and whenever you can, ch choose memory-based storage because it's much faster than uh, the disk storage. Of course, this, this will, this will uh, sh uh, make a, a difference in a very uh, on the sites that have a, a, large, a large number of requests. Uh, uh, but also on the small sites, because the user will get information instantly versus, uh, it's one to 10 ratio or something like that. Uh, when you have like one second and you break it down to one tenth of second, that's a big difference. Uh, uh, caching types. Uh, first, uh, first thing that you can see in basically all, most of the Joomla classes uh, is variable caching. Uh, Short-lived cache that's stored in the memory, you get uh, for instance, some results, you store it in the variable and you can use them uh, through the execution cycle. Uh, if you have only inst one instance of the class, then you can use normal uh, uh, normal method. If you have multiple uh, instances and you want to keep the the, the data over the instances, so it's the same stateful uh, storage. You need to use the static uh, variables. Uh, there is also. Uh, Joomla method reverse caching uh, uses the callback and processes the, the uh, caches the result. Uh, this implementation works fine as long as your method only depends on the function parameters. As, as soon as you start 
to have things like uh, uh, object uh, ob object um, properties. It won't work because it won't re recognize that our object property has changed, so that it needs to. Uh, for those, you can use Joomla row cache uh, and. Uh, I forgot to remove this question mark. Uh, uh, one thing you need to know that Joomla does serialization uh, automatically, so you don't need, you can pass it to uh, object uh, and it will serialize it and when retrieved it will deserialize it by default. Uh, then you can use the same raw data cache to store compiled data sets, sets queries, web services, etc. Uh, Joomla out as I, I call it auto caching, but it's basically view cache that stores component output uh, and cache plugin and mo modules. Uh, it's usable uh, when application output only depends on URL parameters on that other hand. Uh, non uh, this is for non-authenticated or no data from cookies or session and like that because it does not account of those parameters and will, it will serve, for instance, the same cache for mobile and uh, desktop, which is not often not okay because images you serve different images, etc. That I'm talking about. I'm talking about the system plugin. And there is also HTTP caching, which is more server side, like Warmish or similar, uh, but the same rule as in the previous point applies. Uh, this is uh, the illustration of how Joomla caching uh, different types work. Uh, on the top is the caching plugin, uh, the green one is the view caching, and the, the, gray, the gray area are modules. And the orange is the orange is some method cache used underneath, uh, and that's how it's combined on the page. Uh, preloading, preload frequently needed data into memory. But please, don't blindly pre preload all items as Joomla does, because what happens? Uh, C memory column uh, it uses for for hundred thousand I inserted hundred thousand items which is a realistic scenario and you, when you it loads all of them into memory so single execution takes seventy three megabytes just for this operation which uh, or at that point memory usage goes to one point. 81 megabytes for 1,000 concurrent users, that would mean 80 gigabytes of RAM, <laughs> which is quite a lot. Uh, uh, some might, might think that this is not a realistic scenario, but what I say is you should use internet <laughs> more. <laughs> Why? <laughs> uh, yes, but it's a membership site. Uh, that show content only for the members because the authentication only runs when uh, you have authenticated users. It does not run on a website that's only for the public users. I mean, much less it's needed. Uh, and this one is not Joomla, I just use it as an example. So. But uh, in previous time, I worked for a uh, for a <laughs> company that did uh, this uh, gallery and they did have some really large porn <laughs> site <laughs> uh, that we had to support and it, they had the same problem on that those sites so it's not an uh, ima imagined uh, example, it's a real example. Uh, other things that you can do, uh, use PHP 7, it's r really faster. Don't use PHP 5.6 or what the latest version is. Use PHP 7. Uh, activate PHP opcode caching. Uh, this means that 
the files are pre-compiled, you would otherwise PHP compiles it on the fly. Each time you access uh, a script, it's being compiled. Uh, uh, Opcode caching does this upfront, or it, it does when the first time the script is accessed, and then uh, then uh, it stores it. Uh, it's not about the data; it's the PHP code itself that gets pre-compiled. This also drastically improves performance. Uh, uh, th this thing is in PHP 7, it's activated by default in PHP, I think since <coughs> PHP 5.6 it's in and it's activated by default before you had to install something like APC or Xcache, uh, which did the same thing as now op op cache does in PHP 7. Uh, there is also Wincache and Zend optimizer, depending on your operating system or the uh, the server behind it that also work with PHP 7. Other uh, others don't because it's they stop developing after PHP 5.6. Uh, hip hop virtual virtual machine. Uh, three, I already just read that 3.7 is compatible, but as far as I know, uh, most of people are uh, most of projects are dropping support of it because PHP 7 basically does the same improvement without any additional hassle uh, because a hip hop virtual machine is not PHP; it's like PHP, so it needs a lot of workarounds to, for things to work. <laughs> Uh, and of course, there is always server infrastructure, database replication, load balancing, clouds, and things like that. But uh, as I said, there are other people that can talk about it more in detail. Thank you. That would be all from my side. So if you have any questions, please. No questions? Okay, <laughs> thank you.